Hi, Vincent. How are you doing? This is David. Hey, David. How's it going? It's doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be speaking with you. I uh, joined the beautiful weather here today in Michigan. I'm not sure about New York, but we've had an interesting, interesting year this year. Oh, yeah? yeah. Weather-wise? Or- oh, I mean, we've had the lightest snow. We had a couple dumps and then just beautiful weather like it's been spring all year. Awesome. It's yeah. been really good here, too, so we can't complain. Yeah. I- I'm wondering uh, how long it's going to last, eh? <laughs> Who knows, man? Yeah. I wanted to talk a little bit about before we get started here about the uh about the guitar. Um, which is absolutely amazing. Um oh, thanks, man. You are welcome. Uh I visited your Facebook page, I visited um your website as well and went went to look at your other work and I I've known about your work for quite some time. I can't remember the first time that I've heard about you. I've heard about you a few different seven times, whether it's re- regarding your tattoos or or your blood pa- blood painting. I remember you talking about how the blood decomposed on the uh, uh, the the canvas and how you went over it and as part of the artistic process, which was fascinating me, the extraordinary detail and how no artist has has done anything like this at all. But but I went. And and I looked over a few few of the uh, uh, of my favorites and, and and what people were saying about them and I just remember just having all of these memories of the years of admiring your work and and now that this guitar has come up has brought me back to the early '90s music you know when I was a kid listening to Slayer, right? Uh, you know and Metallica and all of them and and how how this seems to be a perfect fit for you. Oh, yeah, 100%, man. Yeah. It, it was like, uh, you know, uh, it's another example of, um, you know, in my career of working with some of your heroes. You know, like uh, Eager was uh, an example, and that was, uh, you know, just a, a pivot point where, uh you know, I felt like the skies had opened up or, or something, you know, to have been acknowledged uh, by Giger in that way. And and similarly, um, you know, to work with Slayer, to work with Gary Holt and uh, ESP, I mean, you know, uh, first show I ever went to was the Slayer show. <laughs> it was like 94, uh, yeah. uh, Slayer Machine Head and Biohazard at Roseland. And, uh, you know, so to... Uh, to be working with uh, professionally uh, with, with uh, them and um, doing such personal work uh, for Gary, it's just uh, it's just it's so, it's surreal, you know. Right, absolutely. You know, speaking of surreal, you know, your genre, the surrealism, the contrast that you draw between life and death, you know, is it, amazing in your work. Um, the, the, your inspiration being situational. Um, that your your inspiration and motivation to do your work seems to be what you're going through at the time, really really kind of draws me to the attention of what was your situation like when 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 you did this piece in your life. You know, um, things are at the moment. Uh, you know, I, I've I've been asked about where the inspiration comes from, and and you know you can really look at the work and delineate pretty clearly uh somewhat where where I was at each particular point in time and um something I'll point to in the work which has uh um changed over the years I think uh apparently is the amount of violence to the flesh you know mm-hmm. before a certain point you know, these figures were just like ripped up and there was so much decay. And mm-hmm. even though there were uh, strains of uh, of hope and uh, peace that were running through the pieces and the figures' positions or in their faces, they were still maimed. You mm-hmm. know, and it was very much the, the place I was coming out of and, and, and trying to get away from or... Uh, you know, so forth, and um, so in recent years, I feel like the work, the figures themselves have become uh, more whole and, uh, you know, stronger, 
and this piece is is really a representation of that and um you know it was a, it was a piece that Gary uh obviously I'm working with him so uh I wanted to have his input on it you know cuz he just he left it initially gave me pretty much free reign over it he, he just said he wants something sick <laughs> yeah. that was like the operative word Absolutely. and uh that's awesome you know, but like yeah. something so personal for him, working in his blood and everything. So I, I wanted to get some concrete uh, direction. So we bounced some ideas back and forth, and we came to um, the idea of a classical depiction of Lucifer, not right. the contemporary ugly, you know, uh, you know, uh, disfigured looking scary uh monster mm -hmm. but a, a an actual you know like the the biblical kind of classical representation uh, right that he was the most beautiful, beautiful. angel and, and so forth so that was the aim here mm -hmm. and um he's kind of depicted m moving through some fire you know on the guitar it's the guitar is basically on fire there's there's flames and he, there's a lot of movement, and uh, uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of how that happened. Great, you know, speaking of the movement, it's exactly what I wanted to talk to you about uh, was the texture, uh, the pulse to uh, your your work, especially on this guitar. It seems, it seems to come alive. Um, the surface seems to pop right out at you. What well, in your technique? Like, how do you get the artist, or how do you get the viewers' eyes to do that? Well, it's it really is a matter of composition. Um, you know, um, the canvas here was the shape of the guitar. That's what I was, uh, you know, those were my parameters. And it was a matter of the design occupying the space fully. Uh, so it, what I mean by that is not going so, you know, not going small, uh, or I should say, going large enough that what is most important about the design is communicated in the size of things. And, you know, I do that in the other, uh, the work I do on, on canvas as well. You know, it's like uh, there's conscious thought put into some things and the rest of it kind of just happens, the nuances. But that's very deliberate, you know, the composition. And... Um, so in in this case it's lucifer and uh he was the most important thing about this composition so uh it needed to be the largest and in order to get him to get that sense of movement uh you know I've got this three quarter view um and also the the fire is waving it's kind of moving from uh from left to right, uh, and it's indicating his movement in that direction, you know, or from right to left, I should say. From right to <laughs> so, left. So, right, yeah. and it, it's it's a matter of just the the direction that the flames are moving, and also the the uh, view, um, the uh, angle that we're seeing Lu the Lucifer figure at. So, all of that stuff is really deliberate, and it just is uh, comes into. Uh, the composition. It's all yeah, the composition. absolutely. And I think that's one of the first things that I noticed about the sophistication of the piece was how my eyes moved and how you deliberately made me move from right to left to go in between the pickups and just the amazing detail and and, and how and how how difficult and how sophisticated that is. It's very very interesting. One 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 reason why I have loved your work for so, for so long and and why. Um, which brings me to to why you decided to use a guitar as a canvas. Well, uh, we had uh, talked about the project and uh, whether or not it would be possible, and that was that was the motivating force here. Uh, Gary wanted it. Uh, I was completely into doing it, and it was just a matter of whether it would be possible or not and I, I didn't see why not mm -hmm. um it was just a matter of uh getting that surface to work with me <laughs> mm -hmm. to work with the blood because i had never worked on on a, on a guitar before but logistically 
you know, I mean, it's it's. I, I felt like you know, uh, it would be like any other surface, and it wasn't initially because <clears throat> what I was trying to paint on, even though it was primed, it's primed uh, for other types of paint, you know, an acrylic or an oil uh, for the blood. It was not initially working because um, it was it was basically just repelling the the substance you know and i was, I was trying to lay in my ground my foundation uh uh pass over uh, of the painting and i got about a quarter of the way through um and i was just realizing like you know what this is not uh this is not adhering it's it's mainly being pushed around on the surface but you know i can't achieve a second pass on top of the first where as that's the way I develop these things. It, it they're developed in the lightest tone, the very lightest, to the most opaque, from light to dark, and it dozens and dozens of passes, and that's how I achieved that level of realism. And uh, you know, I couldn't even get a second pass on top of that first because uh, because of the uh, the primer. So I had to treat it in certain ways, and um, there was a good deal of uh, prep work involved but once i got it to stay it was like man i just went for the throat that's the only way i could put it because i had been <laughs> so you know worried about you know i committed to this project and it's a it's a public situation now you know i've done interviews behind it i got this is gary's blood here and uh and it's and it you know it's getting pushed around on the surface and and I was just like fuck man you know I I have to make this work and uh and you know I did once I got it you know as I said there were some steps I needed to take uh to um to get it to stay there and once I got that first pass on there and it was like on there like a dream you know it was it was applying properly I it just was like uh I clicked into uh you know, in, in, in maniac mode as far mm -hmm. as the detail goes, and you know, I, I you know, really, I'd cite it as my work, my uh, most uh, detailed work to date. You know, and I, it's obviously it has to do with the uh, the stature of the project, the fact that it's for Gary and and so forth, and it also is an it's very much about where I'm at right now and my level of development, but then also, um, um, oh, what was I going to say? Uh, uh, I just lost my train of thought. Uh, oh, yeah, having been frustrated by working on a, a surface that wasn't uh, cooperating with me initially and then, and then getting it to work, it was like, it's working now, I'm going to put like as much detail per square millimeter on this thing as as I possibly can, and that's okay. just what I did. Wow, incredible, and, and it paid off. And I was also um, reading about how you used uh, Jesson G, G E S S O N to get it to apply. Oh, um, uh, Gesso, yeah, Gesso. Gesso. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Okay, um, yeah. So and that seems like an interesting process and and and, and um, an important process and a learning process for you. Um, which, it was. which is yeah, which is um, um, something that is further developed with you as an artist. Oh, uh, I, I wanted to know. Um, you know, I, I saw that eighteen vials of blood that he yeah. was using, um, and 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 I, I know that's um, your medium, and that's just an important piece. And you usually you use uh, your own blood. Um, I wanted to know how how much blood have you ever used for one piece? But not only that, have you? Is this your first time going and using somebody else's blood? Um, it's it's the second time that I'm mm -hmm. uh, working with the blood of the collector of mm -hmm. the artwork. Okay. Um, I had uh, you know used my blood uh, primarily uh, for my whole career thus far. Uh, there was a point uh, at which I needed all mine because I was uh, recovering from lung surgery. I had part of a, my right lung removed and so forth uh, due to uh, it collapsing. and uh, So I needed all my blood at that point, and I had uh, taken some donations from friends who wanted to become part of my work. And uh, so uh, 
but other than that, it, it's been primarily my blood. And um, uh, this was this was the second. So Margaret Cho, uh, comedian Margaret Cho, uh, did a uh, mm. uh, portrait for her in her blood, and uh, and then Gary's is now the second. And I've since then, you know, it's it's kind of becoming somewhat of a thing. People would like to be in the work. They want to be the work, which is, you know, it's incredible. You know, it's it's one of the most, uh, I find it to be like one of the most magical, for lack of a better word, things is to take uh, the part of someone's uh, physicality and, and the, the essence of what makes them them, their actual DNA, all... Uh, instructions for life and reproduction uh, are, are contained in that uh, substance, and to create a, uh, a piece of artwork based on that, it, it's one of the most um, uh, like uh, profound uh, transformations of, of substance and form that mm. I can think of in this in this life, and it's why I chose to work with it and. Uh, uh, so, what was the second part of that question? How much blood? Yeah, how much blood? Um, um, I usually, at this point, get about 15 vials, uh, 15 to 20 vials at a time, mm. uh, out of myself, just because it's moderate, because I'm continually taking it. Mm. If I'm taking, uh, you know, blood from a, a collector, I mean, I can get, I can get a little more than that, uh, because I mean, it's one one collection and we're not going to be repeating it uh uh the larger works uh stings of a lash which is like um it's almost seven feet tall that uh, that's a piece that took almost four months it was like uh three and a half months or so to paint and of continuous work so it's probably that and the sleep which is the same size those are the two that uh, took the most blood. Uh, as far as how much, I couldn't even say at the time because uh, it was just a lot. Um, uh, <laughs> a whole lot, uh, you know. <laughs> I, I wouldn't even know what number to put on it. No, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Um, well, speaking of the piece coming up, you know, being a part of, the piece the, the you making the um the essential component um the DNA a part of your artwork how does it feel that Gary is going around playing with your guitar at these concerts i think he's in boston tonight uh playing playing live with your shows for millions of eyes to see your work how does that feel it's, I mean, it's incredible, and it's it's even more incredible, um, you know, uh, the fact that uh, it's Gary's blood, you know, because he's what I find about this piece that's so so unique and so you know awesome is, uh, you know, he is a musician that has this. Uh, uh, it so perfectly fits him, and it fits Slayer. You know, exactly. uh, you can't write a Slayer song without the words blood, without <laughs> the word blood in it. Yeah. You just can't, you know. Yeah. And so he's in the forefront there, playing an instrument which is producing this sound via, you know, he, he, the the, uh, the the physicality of his body, but he's also using, uh, uh, you know, the, the, it's it's his vital fluid that created the image so it's just like the completion of this kind of conceptual circle that is uh, once again kind of surreal because what what literally flows through his veins you know people can say you know music is in his veins or or it's in his blood or you know whatever no really it's like came out of his veins it was transformed into this image and now that instrument is producing the sounds that's propelling uh, these shows and uh, you know so it's like it's just incredible to me you know? yeah it, your artwork has become an interactive tool and the, the awesomeness that Slayer is 
I, I agree, man, and uh, I couldn't have done it without Gary. That's that's for sure. And uh, you know, I'll say that it was definitely a singularly inspiring project to work on, and an honor to be working with uh, Gary. You know, he's a metal god. You know, so it's like working with blood of the gods. You know, in a <laughs> sense. You know, absolutely. I, I, are you planning on doing any other work with any other artists, or making any other guitars in the future? Um, you know, there is, uh, yep, there's a, there's a new project on the, uh, on the horizon, which, uh, is so new, I can't even talk about it just yet, but oh, wow. it's, uh, it's, it's another singularly unique, um, really awesome and inspiring, uh, project, and, um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, we can check back. You know, if you want to check back with me in like a month or so, it should be uh, probably in the works and started, and and I'll be able to uh, discuss it publicly at that point. But it's also using the musician's blood to paint uh, the piece. Awesome, that's really cool. Yeah, I'll be definitely looking forward to that and checking back into that. I, um, awesome. You know, I, I I wanted to talk to you a little bit. You know. Um, back about your inspiration here, you know, I have one thing that that really inspired me, or it really kind of drew me when I began to research you was was the the, the um the connection you had to empowering yourself through your work, um, the situations that you're in, using your motivation. You talked about some of the childhood stressors that you fa- that that you face, and and how you've learned as, uh, to 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 create a sense of balance. Correct. From reading about your philosophy, and if I could say any word, balance would be it. And 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 you seem to be agreeing agreeing with me. Could you could you could you discuss a little bit more, perhaps, about your philosophy? Uh, how the stressors in your childhood relates to to the balance in your life? Sure, sure. Um, well, to say, uh, to put it lightly, you know, uh, I, you know, growing up was just uh, uh, a nightmare, and uh, um, you know, making art was something that I did, you know, for as early as I can hold a, a pencil. It's, you know or a crayon or whatever the fuck I had at the time because it was really the most effective way to uh, disassociate from my environment and, uh, you know, everything that was going on. And um, and uh, as I, you know, it's just something that I did obsessively and I continued to do and it became something that I could not get away from. You know, it was like I had to and through that process, uh, it became so much more. So initially, if I, if I had to be honest about it, you know, making art was distraction. That's how it started. And I just mm. did it all, you know, I did it constantly because I needed it. And mm. it became, then it became catharsis. And mm. after doing it for so many years and evolving and growing as a, as a human being, it, it, then it became a kind of guiding force where there was consciousness and and a very deliberate um, uh, content being uh, addressed in the work but yeah I mean you know I, I've I've talked about it in prior interviews you know uh, you know my mother was very uh, mentally ill let's say and mm-hmm. uh, you know undiagnosed you know uh, many multiple diagnoses going undiagnosed and uh you know she's she's uh since passed and uh but it it was uh very confusing and um and, and really just you know a, a lot of abuse and uh mm-hmm. you know she was also uh she was a hoarder you know mm-hmm. um uh and when i say that i mean of of, of rotting garbage you know mm-hmm. like of of trash of food garbage and so i mean i grew up in like uh, floor to ceiling garbage and 
uh, you know, maggots uh, in my mattress and on the walls, and uh, the place was uh, was a disaster, and and that's what I lived in for far too long, and and that was just kind of like what it looked and smelled like, the the actual circumstances and the behavior and 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 things that were going on were just uh, uh, beyond uh, description, and uh, so. To get back to the actual purpose, uh, the work served, uh, yeah, not to sound trite, it was how I, su- how I survived. Some people, you know, might say it at, and, you know, mean it on a different level. This is like, I, no, it's actually how I fucking survived. It's how I, like, got through and, and, and mm-hmm. lived through the circumstances. And then, you know, as I said, it became so much more, you know. It, it wasn't about survival anymore, but it was about, you know... Um, uh thoughtfully addressing uh every um issue uh that was important enough for uh, me to work through so uh and and that's what the work became and that's why it's so personal to me you know mm. that's profound that's 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 incredible i wanted i wanted to know what kind of stuff were you were you drawing at that time when you were a child? Uh, well, I, I liked to draw demons before yeah. a certain point in time, and mm-hmm. I would often draw demons uh, ripping uh, people apart and uh, eating uh, people and, you know, stuff like that. I mean, when I was very, very little, I, I you know, I mean... Uh, <laughs> I, I couldn't even tell you. I mean, whatever, whatever someone, uh, you know, a four-year-old or a five-year-old will be drawing. But, uh, uh, you know, when it became, when there was a lot of uh, conscious emotion being put into it, it, it turned into, like, darker stuff and demons and uh, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Uh, but by the time that it wasn't just raw, emotion and and sensation that I was uh, communicating or uh, it it, it was it became once again quite deliberate and you know some people uh, some people need to go to church and that that serves their purpose and that's how they connect with whatever they deem uh, the, the creative force and that's that's fine this is like my faith and my way of um, connecting with uh, the the universal life is through working, uh, you know, on my on my paintings. It's like uh, my consecrated, sanctified space and, and time. Um, mm. I approach these canvases like like an altar in, the, in a sense, and these are the literal blood sacrifices uh, um, that. I take seriously, you know, it's not, uh, and I, you know, life doesn't have to be so serious all the time, but my work, my work is, you know, I don't, it's not a, it's, I don't kid with it and, uh, because there's nothing playful about it, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a serious conveyance of, you know, what is ultimately important for me. So it's not only your work; it's it's a it's a way of you being spiritual and connecting with your spiritual side, and connecting with others spiritually as well. I I believe that to be the case. Yeah, that's excellent. Is there anything else, uh, Vincent, that you think that it's important to, to leave here, to leave with, um, as far as you know your work and 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 how you've become to to meet. Uh, uh, Gary Hall and, and to do this beautiful guitar. Yeah, I mean, if you'd like to, you know, mention my website in the mm. feature and sure. some of the new, I've, I've got some new uh, hand painted uh, limited editions that are uh, in the store, which is, you know, uh, a lot of people are interested in the work, and because of the how long these things take me. Um, you know, not everyone can afford one because, right. you know, I mean, these things take me a month or two months. <laughs> me, and my to ed- each. me and my editor were just speaking about that before he called, like how we wanted the piece. We were talking, I was like, we could get a poster for $60. <laughs> <You know? laughs> 
<laughs> yep, yep. There are there are limited edition posters signed for as low as sixty, and, but I do have these hand painted editions, which are, I mean, essentially. It's a hybrid between an original and a limited edition, uh, high quality, you know, museum quality print. So yeah. it's a print that I've painted on, and it's drenched in my blood, and uh, and I mean that by painting it. You know, I'm spending a, a very fair amount of time uh, working on each one of these, and it's it's a unique piece of artwork in itself, and comes with a certificate of authenticity, each one, and uh, they're available through uh, my web store. So okay. that's a, a relatively new phenomenon, and it, it's something that I offered to, uh, you know, for collectors who, you know, want to own a piece of me for real, uh, but, you know, they can't afford the uh, the uh, full-scale, full-blown originals. This is like the, the, the happy medium. The, right. That's awesome. That's really cool. My editor would be very pleased to hear that because uh, she's, she's actually interested in one of your pieces, and so on. Awesome. I. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. Uh, Vincent, it was a pleasure to meet you. Thank oh, you again likewise, for this inter interview. Great. And uh I, I appreciate this interview and, and and good luck on on your new piece that that uh I'm sure is gonna be a masterpiece. Thank you so much, man. And uh, as as I said, if you'd like to check back in in about a month, uh we can we can talk more then and in full detail about that. Very very cool. Th thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Have so a much, good day. David. You, you too. too. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.